multi-touch. I mean, we're spending a, uh, a very, very big number, what, what uh, companies our size would typically spend on TV advertising on paid search. So you know, making sure we're actually attributing the dollars appropriately, it's a big deal. You know, what we know is, historically, we've been looking at 30-day last touch, as, as most companies have. I, I don't think there's anyone here who knows that's wrong. I mean, there's no way that that just happens to reflect all consumer behavior, that whatever the touch what last was is the only thing that influenced the, the sale. I mean, we all know that's wrong, but it's what we've had. You know, so if it turned out most users were only doing one marketing touch, okay, that's fine. Or if the costs of all channels were basically the same, okay, that's fine, but they're not. In fact, we know, and I'll show some data on this, it's about half of transactions involve multiple touches. So, you know, what does bad look like? Well, kind of what probably most of us have. You know, a small number of keywords make up a large proportion of volume. Few long tail keywords are really generating the bookings that we're bidding on. In fact, we may be bidding down on things that should be doing well, but because of last touch, just don't bubble up to the surface. And then you get interesting things like, is email getting a pretty big source of credit? I often find email gets a lot of love. It drives a lot of, of transactions. You know, but if you stop and think about it, okay, maybe 40, 45% of our emails are what I'd call trigger-based. They're emails that happen as a result of you coming to our site and doing something, and we have you cookied, and we send you an email. Okay, well, if I give that email the credit for the sale, then whatever it was that brought you to the site that caused the trigger event to happen to get you the email in the first place is gonna get zero credit. So then the next person isn't gonna come to the site. You know, how is that good? So we've really been working on, on attribution approaches that say, let's make sure we're putting the money where it matters. And like in this case, we've stripped email out. We've said, hey, you know, sorry email team, don't take it personally. You definitely are driving transactions through the buying process, but in terms of acquisition, we're stealing from the channels if we give you the credit. Now how do we, I mean, that's a very simplistic example, but how do we approach those things? And we're doing everything from, from very advanced statistical modeling to just very simple rules-based analysis on common sense things like this. Um, and looking through it, it really does play out. I mean, the, uh, the number of users that are getting multiple touches. We dug in, we said, let's prove this to ourselves, let's make sure we're not just going off assumption here. But yeah, about half of the transactions involve at least more than one touch. So are you giving credit to what actually drove the sale? We're getting serious about innovation testing, or as, uh, as Bob Page calls it, which I love, as experimentation or experimentation and learning. Um, you know, we, we've had a homegrown system for years for doing what's more traditional A-B testing, and the thing works. It allows us to do limited rollouts, it allows us to do, new, do no harm as we release new things. It's ingrained in almost everything we've ever released to market, and it saves us a lot of money. We, we literally are able to do no harm because of this. But true front-end multivariate testing is just the one thing Expedia, for some reason, has just never engaged in, and we're, we're starting to get in there. And the hunger for it is, is growing like crazy. It's as we educate the organization, they know that. And what's happened now is literally, you know, as we're becoming product managers, as we're aligned with the other development operations going on, this is now becoming a, a huge source of demand for us We've got to do testing. We've got to do rapid iteration. We know we're not going to get it right on the first try. Help us, help us, help us. Uh, that's great. Just got to meet the demand. Um, so on the subject of testing, this is just interesting on, uh, you know, when you talk about measurement, and we, we've heard discussions on right goals and right KPIs. So here's just a classic example where we did great design against great measures that fundamentally didn't yield business results. So right now on our site, if you go to hotel search results, here's our search results, and you'll see a list of hotels, and you click in on one, and you end up on you know, rich, engaging content. And it was designed to be rich and engaging. We were gonna have better information than any other place you can buy hotels from. And we were gonna have you know, a whole tree of navigation on getting through it, and there's a taxonomy, and I mean, it's, it, it really is a, a work of art for what it was. And it was lab tested, and did consumers, you know, did they get the information they needed, and, and was it interactive, and was it engaging, and it was. And this is what we launched a couple years ago. So stepping back, if you think about what a streamlined booking flow might be, this is, you know, really kind of what Amazon's is. You know, you'd expect you do a product search, get some search results, you'd get 
a product description, maybe you'd get some reviews on the product on a separate page. From the description, you should be able to just say, hey, I wanna buy this product, or maybe there's some configuration options, and then go in. I mean, it seems pretty simple. So what did we build? This. So by having lots of rich, engaging content, it meant we didn't have a product detail page. We had six product detail pages, and a seventh page, which you needed to go to to even know what it cost. Now, there's three key things pretty much everyone wants if they're gonna get a hotel. They wanna know the price. Any guesses on the others? Availability. Where is it? Seems like a pretty reasonable thing. I may have searched on New York, but that's a pretty big place. Yeah, where is it? R reviews, uh, more of just star rating quality of the hotel does it have a restaurant, so basic amenity information. So, guess, so, uh, you know, location. Guess how many of these seven pages location is on? One. The uh, hotel detail, or the location and map page. Yeah, guess how many pages the pricing is on? One. How about basic amenities, check-in, check-out time? That's eh, on the uh, hotel details page. So think about that. If you wanna look at four hotels, you've gotta look at four times four pages just to get through that. It's kind of crazy. And you know, we're an analytics group. We started looking at it and saying, hey, let's, let's prove this out. And sure enough, you, know, you look at sort of aggregate numbers here. People get a landing page, wherever they're coming in, this is from our UK site. 80% you know, get to a second page, 60% get to that mass spider web of information pages, and then 5% somehow managed to get out of that. Anyone wanna take any guesses on where the opportunity is on this funnel? It's a trick question. Um, so again, think about that. Are you using, we've, we've heard this many times, are you using the right goals? Are you using the right KPIs? You can have projects that meet stated KPIs, but is it really getting to the core? Where you book matters. Are we giving the customers what they need? This was great if we wanted to be a rich, engaging site. Not so great if we actually want to sell them something. And they're coming to buy. We're getting serious about VOC or voice of customer and closed loop. Now, this is interesting. This is one of those uh, be careful what you wish for problems. We, uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of people now getting daily feeds of all the comments we're getting from our customers. And they're reading it. I mean, everyone from the CEO to field level people. Rich, engaging feedback from our customers. The problem now is, and this is globally, is no one knows who's doing anything with it. And we probably every day have 100 emails go around on, hey, Bob, did you see the uh, such and such going on here? And there's a supply thing, and there's a content description wrong that someone reported, and that price is wrong, and you know, whatever it may be. And we had no way to manage it. So we built a literally a workflow solution. So every day, everyone who gets these emails, not only can they go in with tea leaf and see the sessions, which is pretty darn cool, but we've got direct links into what we call view and add notes, where you can go right in and say, Anyone can do this. It's a crowdsourced workflow solution. It's kind of novel. So if hundreds of people are reading it, a lot of people are going to look at it and go, oh, that's a, you know, th that's a copywriter issue. Let me now just assign it to the copywriter queue. Or that's a geography issue. Or that's a supply issue. And we can just do that now. And it's just tied right into the emails that everyone gets. We started looking at mobile. And uh, kind of surprised us. It was one of these things that like, we kind of thought, maybe some people are doing mobile, but it, you know, it turned out one and a half percent of our traffic was coming on mobile. We had no mobile site, no mobile experience, no nothing, but they were common. It was 85, 90% iPhone, iPod touch, because those devices can. And they were booking at nearly the same conversion rates as the full site. So they're common and we're not doing anything for them. So we, uh, said, we gotta solve that, and you know, again, it's an interesting one. I couldn't find anyone in the company to do it. We had some strategy stuff going on with a bunch of McKinsey people. We had you know, people saying, hey, let's just figure out how to build this, but it seemed impossible, and you know, a lot of projects that weren't going anywhere. So again, kind of on the product side, I said, we know what to do, we got the data, we'll take it, and we did. 
and uh, you know, my team now owns mobile globally. Um, so if you can, I, I was having some embedded video problem here. But. So my business partner Bob and I were meeting a prospective client for dinner in LA. Bob was coming from Seattle, and I was in Chicago. On my way to the airport, I got a text from Expedia, warning me that my flight was seriously delayed. So I launched the Expedia app and found an alternate flight. The good news, I could still make the meeting. The bad news, Bob and I wouldn't have time at the hotel to finalize our pitch. I used the app to send Bob my updated flight info so he wouldn't get all worked up wondering where I was. I then went to the Seat Guru tool to make sure I had an outlet for my laptop and elbow room to work. Good thing I checked. No power at my seat. So I made a seat change at the airport. During the layover, my itinerary auto-updated and showed my second flight's estimated arrival. Huh, I was gonna be cutting it close. So check this out. I booked a rental car while sitting on the tarmac right from Expedia's mobile site. LA traffic was gonna be bad enough, but luckily the app automatically showed me the hotel address and a map to get there. I grabbed Bob and we made the dinner just in time. The meeting went great. And that prospective client isn't prospective anymore. The Trip Assist app from Expedia. Just another reason where you book matters. Analytics guys. And when analytics people get to play with mobile, guess what happens? We instrument the heck out of this thing. And it creates all sorts of challenges. I, I don't even know what a mobile device is anymore. Is an iPad mobile? It's a full-blown browser. It's always on. It's over a 3G network. I, I, I don't know. And now you've got these 3G cards in your laptops. And it's the, the standard definitions of what is a device and what's a browser, it's getting very, very blurry. And we're getting into a world of richer clients, HTML5, the, uh, I mean, on the iPhone, it's a thick client. We've gone backwards to the days of client server. That's what it is. How do you instrument that? What's a page view? What's a visitor? How do you do a flow? What's a fallout report? I mean, it's, it's managing state cross-session. It's got locally cached information. There's network. It's, 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 a, it's a whole new world that our vendors aren't quite ready for yet. We had Omniture build custom new images of, of tracking tools for us. We've got Opinion Lab in here to get feedback. And that was the point. You know, we don't know. We're kind of blind to what really matters here. I mean, well, what I will tell you is uh, if you go onto the Apple Store right now and see the rating of our app, you'll see that it's a phenomenal two-star rating. We're very proud of that. And, you know, the funny part is, uh, Biggest complaint we get is right now we've got a full mobile site, m.expedia.com, and we have this, which is really a, a trip it type of tool. It's, a, it's a let me manage any itinerary, let me get real-time SMS alerts. If you booked with Expedia, which you don't have to to use the app, we'll auto-sync any changes to your itinerary, and it's totally free. It's really the only free offering that has the set of capabilities we've got, so we've given it to the world. So, we called it Trip Assist to try to have a flanker brand and have it not be Expedia, but we didn't fool anyone. They saw Expedia, and Expedia is about booking, and this app isn't about booking, and we get lots and lots of comments on, uh, your Expedia, for the love of God, can you please let me book my flight on the app? So we're getting there. We are getting there. But how do we know that? Instrumentation, feedback, and we put like an Opinion Lab card directly in the app, and some amazing things happened. First of all, this is a chatty bunch of people in mobile. We got a lot of feedback. So I just started comparing the amount of feedback we got versus the number of opens of the app versus feedback on the website versus visitors, and literally five times more feedback per visitor through mobile. Thank God we were listening, and they were telling us really good stuff very, very quickly. And the other cool thing, which we hadn't anticipated, just a great little bit of learning, is uh, they were giving us the feedback. They weren't posting their complaints to the App Store. It allowed us to have a dialogue directly with the consumer, and you know, we read it, we act on it. And you know, perfect little example on how analytics plays out here and how customer experience. So here's a real feedback that we got. I, I pasted it in here. You know, just updated the app, and it didn't carry over my booked itinerary from Expedia. Useless. This is one of the kinder comments family-friendly audience or something like that. Um, so what was going on? And we were really racking our brains. We were going through the server logs on the itinerary APIs that are pulling in. Was anything failing? And what's happening? And you know, fortunately, we instrumented the heck out of this thing. So we were able to start looking at the sequences of button presses through the app. 
and we discovered a pretty interesting thing. So it turned out we had an app in the App Store that was developed a year ago. It was called the Expedia Itinerary Viewer. It had very, very small adoption. It was a one and a half star rating app. Um, and uh, we completely replaced it with this new uh, trip assist thing. But our developers, the, the clever sprites that they were, said, well, even though we threw all the code away, we can still grab the stored credentials so that anyone, you know, for the few thousand people that had the old app, bless those loyal customers, you know, they'll auto log in. So it turned out we didn't realize that was happening and we hadn't tested for that workflow. So our really few loyal customers that were using this, what happened is when they first launched the app, they got some little helpful instruction cards and the last page you saw was, hey, sign in or continue as guest because you don't have to be an Expedia customer to use the app. Well, they were already signed in. So it's kind of a confusing situation then and so they did the most logical thing. They clicked sign in hey, my credentials are already in there. And they clicked the button in the upper right hand corner, which, oh, by the way, is the sign out button. So our good consumers came in, were logged in, went through the flow, did everything we wanted, clicked sign out, went back to the itinerary screen, which doesn't tell you if you're logged in or not, and then wondered what happened. Some figured it out, many didn't. So we had the data, and literally within five days, we had a new version of the app up that had a stateful last page that knew if you were logged in and then says if you're logged in, great, you're still logged in, let's sync your itineraries now. And the problem went away. No one complained about it anymore. So again, even in mobile, a whole new world of challenges, but we're just trying to approach it with the same discipline, the same approach. And that's, that's where I'll leave you. I mean, this is, I think it's mobile's just kind of e-commerce on a little screen, but it's, it's a great metaphor, again, for the things we're continuing to iterate on. How do we continue to make sure we're providing the best service for our customers, no matter how we touch them, no matter what we do, and this whole where you book matters philosophy. So thank you very much.